right. Good morning and welcome to our last uh, Forge webinar series on Alabama Forge's website. My name is Josh Elmore. I'm a regional extension agent uh, with Alabama Cooperative Extension System located in central Alabama. The topic I've been saddled with today is grazing management concepts and practices for beef cattle. The grazing management can be defined as the manipulation of livestock grazing to accomplish a desired result. The desired result depends upon the enterprise, but for most cattle producers, economic goals are of primary importance. Grazing management is a powerful tool that strongly influences pasture and animal performance. Grazing management affects pasture yield, nutritive value, stand longevity, and also affects weight gain or milk production of individual animals, as well as the amount of milk or meat produced per acre. Grazing management decisions for your operation should be based on the characteristics of the forage being grazed, the animal's requirements, input costs associated with adopting a particular system, and the probability of return on investment. We're going to cover quite a bit of material in today's webinar in a very short period of time, but a few key points to take away from today's webinar can be identified as what we call grazing management good rules of thumb. There is no one-size-fits-all grazing method. Each operation has unique circumstances that weigh into grazing management decisions. You need to carefully consider the individual goals and needs of your operation. All the systems we'll discuss will require some level of management skills and inputs. And remember to match the grazing method with the plant, the animal, and the producer's needs to implement a successful grazing system. A large amount of this information is available at our Alabama Forages website and is referenced in this timely information sheet from Dr. Jennifer Johnson and Dr. Kim Mullinex, A Quick Guide to Grazing Methods. Beef cattle production in Alabama is primarily forage-based. Cow-calf, stalker, cattle, and even forage-based finishing can be accomplished using Alabama forage systems. Alabama is an excellent environment for forage and beef cattle production for several reasons. These include high average rainfall, long growing season, a wide range of forages adapted to areas of the state, and local resources such as poultry litter for fertilizer. Forages are often the most cost effective means to supply cattle with needed nutrients. By planning the nutritional program around the forage program, efficient and effective feeding systems can be accomplished. If you don't have one already, Start by implementing a controlled breeding and calving season for your cow-calf herd to better match the animal nutrient needs to the changing forage quality and yield throughout the year. Develop forage systems to match calving season or stalker acquisition periods. Consider animal performance, management, and marketing goals in designing an appropriate forage system. The chart above illustrates when forages are most productive as compared to calving season. The goal is to use the above forage systems to provide high quality grazing to the cattle from calving through harvest. Beef cattle producers are forage producers who utilize these forage resources as inputs for their cattle operation. For most U.S. beef cattle operations, 
nutrition related costs make up a significant portion and sometimes a majority of cash costs. As Dr. Goodrich showed on Tuesday, feed costs typically account for 40 to 60 percent of costs in cow calf operations and even larger amounts in stocker operations. Harvested forage costs often compromise a large percentage of nutrition costs. Overfeeding wastes both feed and money. Underfeeding, on the other hand, can hurt cattle reproduction and growth rates. It's um, it is important to recognize and understand grazing management terminology to properly plan and implement grazing management recommendations. Grazing pressure, also known as stocking density, and stocking rate are often confused, but there is a distinct difference in these two concepts. Stocking rate refers to the number of animals being grazed within a given system over a defined period of time. Stocking density refers to the number of animals having access to a particular paddock or field at a particular time. A good reference in understanding stocking rates and grazing systems can be found on our Alabama Beef Systems website, also on the Alabama Forages website, defining what is stocking rate. Mott's curve shows the relationship between animal output per animal and per unit of land area and pasture stocking rate. Now, as forage production increases, a need is created to increase stock numbers to utilize the forage growth. At a low stocking rate, available forage and productivity per animal tend to be high, but output per acre is low. Stocking a pasture below the optimum rate for output per acre all allows for selective grazing or selection of higher quality forage, and that does improve animal productivity. However, output per animal can be compromised at a very low stocking rate. Undergrazing situations will develop. Because forage growth becomes excessive, Forage maturity lowers the forage quality to a point where selective grazing does not overcome the poor quality. Animal dry matter intake and nutrient intake decline with the accumulation of poor quality forage, lowering animal output. As stocking rates increase, less forage is available per animal. Animals compete for forage and have less opportunity to select green leafy forage so animal performance can fall. At the same time, animal output per acre initially increases with stocking rate due to the increased forage utilization. As stocking rate continues to increase, animal gains continue to decline to a point that animal output per acre eventually peaks with animal additions to the pasture and then declines as additional animals carried by the pasture does not compensate for the reduced rates of gain. At very high stocking rates, plant leaf area is not sufficient for adequate photosynthesis. Plants are defoliated below their growing points, and in some cases, plants are weakened and forage growth is depressed. In addition to lower forage production, closely grazed pastures that have, can have more internal parasites. This overgrazing results in both low rates of animal weight gain and low gains per acre. Forage supply must be adequate to meet demands of cattle and other grazing livestock. Forage supply and demand change constantly. Factors affecting forage supplies include forage species, which differ by yield potential and seasonal productivity, soil fertility, low fertility reduces forage yields, climate, some forages are better adapted to and perform better in certain climates, and season, time of the year and environmental factors also impact forage yields and quality. 
Forage demand also varies with animal numbers, type, weights, stage of production, and desired rate of gain. In some cases, excessive forage supplies can be utilized by mechanical harvest for later use. Forage budgets are useful for identifying the pasture and stored forage needs of a livestock operation. Much like a financial budget that helps manage money supply and demand, the forage budgeting process helps manage forage supply and demand. Forage budgeting is used to allocate forage resources to avoid waste from understocking or reduced animal performance and ranch carrying capacity from overstocking. Accurate forage budgeting requires reliable estimates of forage production, yields and timing of forage growth, and intake requirements of livestock. In addition to forage yields, nutrient content or quality must be considered in planning to meet animal nutrient demands. Very good ranch records are needed to develop and maintain effective forage budgets. These budgets identify seasonal deficiencies and surpluses in forage availability. The surpluses are then used during the deficiency periods to best match forage supply and demand. Forage budgeting worksheets are available to assist producers with forage production and utilization planning. A wide selection of forages can be grown in Alabama. The growing seasons may differ from year to year based on rainfall and temperature differences, and also within Alabama due to differences in local conditions. Forage selection depends on the specific location within the state, local soil types, and other environmental conditions. Using only one forage species is not adequate to provide year-round grazing. By developing a forage system of a variety of forages based on their seasonal productivity and quality, beef cattle operations can supply adequate grazing during most months of the year. Alabama and Mississippi can be divided into several ecological regions with varying forage adaptation. The predominant perennial grasses in the upper portion of these states are tall fescue and Bermuda or Bahia grass. The lower half of these states where tall fescue is not adapted rely on warm season perennials Bermuda and Bahia grass as well as cool season annuals in the year round forage system. The black belt region consists of largely tall fescue and various warm season perennials such as Dallas grass, Bahia grass, Bermuda grass, and Johnson grass. Considering production goals and grazing management systems in forage selection decision. Some forages are more tolerant of close grazing than others. Some forages are easier or less expensive to establish or maintain than others. You also need to consider the compatibility of multiple forage species managed together in a pasture or hayfield. Base forage selection in part on forage adaptation. If forages are not well adapted to an area, they may fail or poorly perform. Mixed swords or paddocks or fields that include multiple forage species managed together as one crop. Many pastures are managed as mixed swords. Although monocultures are sometimes established for specific grazing purposes. Mixed sword pastures often include tall and short plant species that respond differently to grazing intensity. There are good reasons to consider adding legumes to pastures. More often than not, pasture systems with the lowest total pasture cost per pound of animal gain include legumes. Legumes generally have higher crude protein and total nutrient digestibility percentages than grasses. However, they often do not produce as much dry matter yield as grasses do. Inclusion of at least one quarter of the pasture cover as legumes 
can increase grazing animal performance. Stalker cattle average daily gains can improve by one quarter pound per day or more by adding legumes to pastures. The unique ability of legumes to obtain nitrogen from the air also makes them especially valuable in forage programs. Forage can be harvested by grazing livestock or by machinery. It can be provided to cattle in many forms, including grazing, hay, silage, and green chop. Allowing animals to harvest forage reduces machinery and related harvest and feeding expenses. It also allows for animal selectivity and can be very efficient method of forage utilization when managed properly. A grazing system is a defined integrated combination of animal, plant, soil, and other environmental components and the grazing methods by which the system is managed to achieve specific results or goals. A grazing method is a defined procedure or technique of grazing management designed to achieve specific objectives. One or more grazing methods can be used within a grazing system. Examples of grazing methods include continuous stocking and rotational stocking. Now, there's no one size fits all method for all farms. Each method is farm or situation specific. Several methods may be used on a farm in different pastures or a different time in a given pasture. Continuous stocking or continuous grazing is a method of grazing livestock on a specific unit of land where animals have unrestricted and uninterrupted access throughout the time period when grazing is allowed. Set stocking is the practice of allowing a fixed number of animals on a fixed area of land during the time when grazing is allowed. Areas can be fenced off from continuous stocking during periods of surplus forage growth to help keep the forage from being grazed and from becoming over mature. The stockpiled forage can then be either grazed at a later date or harvested for hay. Stockpiling forage is where forage is allowed to accumulate for grazing at a later period. Tall fescue and Bermuda grass are two forages often considered for stockpiling. An effective rotational or other intensively managed grazing system can be an affordable way to provide forage to grazing livestock and reduce herd nutrition costs year round. Rotational stocking or rotational grazing is a grazing method that uses recurring periods of grazing and rest among two or more paddocks in a grazing management unit through the period when grazing is allowed. With rotational stocking, grazing control and decision making are switched from the animal to the manager. Having more control over grazing animals through rotational stocking allows the manager to better use forage supplies. A major benefit of rotational stocking is increased carrying capacity when proper management is used. By moving cattle on a regular basis with rotational stocking, cattle become easier to handle. Managers observe cattle more often and can identify and address animal health or other problems more quickly. Pasture plants that are sensitive to close continuous grazing are more persistent and productive in rotational stocking systems. Utilization of more forage species is improved with rotational stocking as weeds are also eaten more than would otherwise occur. This reduces plant competition and favors pasture dominance by desirable forage species. Less forage is wasted by trampling with rotational stocking. Excess forage in ungrazed paddocks can be harvested for hay during periods of forage surplus growth. Fencing paddocks separately based on forage species dominance, concentrating animals in smaller areas for shorter periods facilitates better pasture management and forage utilization. Better overall forage management often results with rotational stocking due to closer observation of both pastures and cattle.
manure and urine distri distribution is more uniform with rotational stocking. Rotational stocking is not without its challenges, though. Concerns with rotational stocking can include unproductive or low quality forage species, poor forage stands, low for soil fertility, unsatisfactory layout, overstocking, and rest periods that are too long, as well as costs. Strip grazing involves confining animals to an area of grazing land to be grazed in a relatively short period of time where the paddock size is varied to allow access to a specific land area. With strip grazing, a temporary fence line is progressively moved across a pasture. In some instances, animals are allowed access to previously grazed strips along with ungrazed strips. In other cases, a back fence line is moved to keep cattle off of previously grazed strips. As we see on the chart above, efficiency improves as we move down the chart with continuous stocking having a typical estimated efficiency of 30 to 40 percent grazing efficiency all the way down to strip grazing having an efficiency of 70 to 80 percent. Now how do we go about figuring the acres and paddocks etc? The easy answer is we use grazing formulas. Grazing formulas help in planning grazing management. To determine the number of paddocks needed, divide the number of paddock rest days by the number of grazing days and then add one to the result. For example, eight paddocks are needed for four day grazing periods with 28 day rest periods. To compute the number of acres needed per paddock, multiply the following. Average animal weight, dry matter consumed per animal as a percentage of body weight, number of animals, and days on pasture. Then take the result and divide by the following. Dry matter available in the grazing area multiplied by the percent of dry matter utilized by grazing. In this example, 40 600 pound steers consume 3% of their body weight in dry matter per day and will be on pasture for four days. Pasture utilization is approximately 60% with 12 inches of forage growth and a thick stand. The number of acres needed per paddock in this scenario is 1.8 acres. Stocking rate, as we discussed earlier, equals the number of animals grazed divided by the num total number of acres grazed. Continuing the example above with 40 steers, the stocking rate is 2.8 steers per acre. Stocking density equals the number of animals divided by the paddock size in acres. Continuing the same example, the stocking density is 22 steers per acre. The total acres required equals the number of paddocks times the number of acres required per paddock. Using the values from previous examples, eight paddocks and 1.8 acres per paddock, the total acres required in this example is 14.4 acres. One topic we will not have enough time to cover today is paddock design and layout. Paddock layout is critical when planning forage utilization programs. The number and size of paddocks needed depends on the number of the total acreage available, the number of cattle to be grazed, intended stocking densities, number of paddock rest days desired between grazing rotations, and resources available to establish adequate fencing, water, and shade for each paddock. The grazing animal is an amazing forage harvesting machine. 
In one day, a mature cow may consume up to 20% of her weight in fresh forage. To achieve this, she moves along slowly over the pasture and takes successive bites by drawing the forage into her mouth with her tongue. With the forage held between her upper dental pad and lower incisor teeth, she pulls or tears it from the plant. Sheep and goats have smaller mouth parts with which they nibble forage, achieving a higher frequency of biting, and may bite using the lower incisor teeth and the dental pad of the upper jaw. The biting action in smaller mouth parts of sheep and goats allow for more selective and closer grazing than the tear act, tearing action of cattle. Horses are highly selective grazers and prefer closely grazed forage. They often heavily graze some spots in pastures while not grazing others. These pastures and patches may become overgrazed from year to year unless forage availability is greatly restricted. Cattle normally graze for about eight hours per day, usually in two major periods, just before dusk and just after dawn, with shorter periods during the day or at night. Hot, humid weather or ingestion of toxic endophyte fescue forage may alter grazing behavior. After a grazing period, the ruminant animal rests and ruminates, regurgitating the forage, chewing the regurgitated bolus, and mixing it with saliva and swallowing it again. Rumination time ranges from five to nine hours daily. Now grazing animals affect pasture productivity and pasture forage species populations via defoliation, treading, and excretion. Defoliation is the harvest of plant shoots or leaves by the grazing animal. It has the largest influence on a pasture of the three factors listed here. Defoliation effects on pastures depend on forage species present, extent of selective grazing of different plant species, defoliation frequency, the extent of the defoliation, the stage of plant development, and the environmental conditions at the time of defoliation. Trampling of pastures by livestock hooves can damage plants, compact soils, and reduce water infiltration on clay soils. Treading damage is most severe during extremely wet periods on clay soils, on recently tilled soils, and soils with short forage. Cattle normally urinate 6 to 11 times daily and defecate 10 to 18 times daily. This excretion concentrates nutrients on the pasture. Nutrients can be further concentrated in areas con where cattle congregate, such as under shade, in water, and feeding areas. Nitrogen is concentrated on urine spots, and phosphorus is concentrated in manure patches. Cattle tend to graze around these excretion sites, reducing the amount of grazable forage in a pasture. Now Matthews et al. showed that 80% of the excreta is deposited in only 30 to 40% of the pasture in continuously stocked warm season systems. However, Rotational stocking, as we discussed earlier, will increase the amount and the, uni the increase the uniformity and distribution in pastures, which is a huge key for our proper nutrient management. Through rotational systems and proper nutrient management, we can improve our soil quality have less nutrient runoff, have a more productive forage system, which is a foundation for better cattle production. Management of both forage and grazing animals is key to successful grazing operations. A good goal is to develop a grazing system that uses properly managed and well-adapted forages 
while at the same time meeting the nutrient requirements of the animals. Every beef cattle operation is different. Cattle class, forage adaptation, soil types, water availability, rainfall, rainfall patterns, etc. And there is not one universally superior grazing system for all operations. So understanding grazing management concepts can help in choosing the appropriate grazing management strategy for your specific beef cattle operation. The references can be found at the following site. And we'd also like to have a special thanks to Dr. Kim Mullinex for some of the slides throughout the program. For more information, you can visit alabamaforages.com, alabamabeefsystems.com, or the southeastcattleadvisor.com.